In this video, we will be making a 3D main menu system, here is the overview. The next part will deal with the save and load system, I tried to stay similar to the FNAF1 menu but anyway, let's start. First import any textures that you have for the main menu like the title image or background images, I also found this CRT noise texture as the overlay. Now, create a folder and make a widget. Call it main menu. Open it up and you should have a blank canvas panel, if you don't have one, add a canvas panel from the side panel. Design it however you like or follow me, I added an image for the title, messed with scaling and positions at the side. I like to keep the positions at zero, I use the anchors to put it to a side and use the pivot points to adjust the position. Add a vertical box, this allows the buttons to be aligned and ordered, you need to put the anchor nearest to the box position on the UI. I also added a horizontal box inside of the vertical box. The button would be inside this box. Now a beginner way is to just add buttons but if you want to change these buttons throughout the game, it could take long it is better to have it as a custom widget. Go to your content browser, I create a widget called base button. Open it and change the screen from fill to desired. Also delete the canvas panel. Add a button to this. Adjust the colors and sounds. You cannot change the scale or location as this is the root component. I also gave it a name and made sure it was a variable. Next add a text. Also change the colors and font for the text. You can also make the justification of the text to center. I gave it a name and set it to as variable. In the button base event graph, add a custom event. Call it update details. In this event, you can change what the text says. Get the name and set text. Hook the text to the event graph to create an input. We can change the text in the main menu. Back in the main menu, add the custom base buttons to the horizontal box. Give it a padding. Change the size to fill. I renamed the button so I can remember what it will do in the event graph. I added another button for quit here. I will add the continue button in the next video. In the main menu. On the pre-construct event. Get your new game button and your quit button. You can call the update button detail event. In the text input, add the text like play game or quit. You can compile and save. Search for event construct. Get your button widget, we can't just press a green button and add it like usual. We need to search for bind event to unclicked. Create a custom event and call it start new game or play game event. To be neat, I deleted the red wire and added a create event node. I selected the custom event that I created. The play game event is simple, do a open level node. Write the name of your game map. Try to do the quit button on your own, it is the same. I will just rush through it here. Add a custom event and call it quit game event. Unreal Engine comes with a built in quit game node. Select your event and that is the widget done. Now this is a 3D menu so I want to design it now. Create a new level and save it as main menu. First lighting, if you have the palette, you can search for sky sphere. This is an old blueprint. It got replaced by sky atmosphere. You could do it manually. However, there is a sun sky asset that has the newer sky system already made. You need to enable in plugins, click on built in and search sun position calculator. Click on the sun sky and if it is bright, you can check the components for a directional light to change intensity from 75,000 to 10. I start creating the map itself using cubes and other static meshes. I just create a simple room as it will be dark. The player doesn't need to see map details. Take however long it will for you. I also changed all these materials to a darker material like the black material. Next optional features is actual lights, I have a pre-made flickering light asset, I made it in another tutorial which I will link, here is the inside of the blueprint, I added a spotlight component, changed the intensity and other cone settings, in the event graph, on begin play, 
I added a simple timeline component, open it and it has a bunch of random key points from zero to a few seconds, I just randomly clicked everywhere and cleaned it afterwards. I also check the looping tick so the flickering loops. Add this code which gets the value from timeline and clamps the intensity of the light. Add the flickering light and place it, it won't work on materials that are black, I added cube as a placeholder for the animatronic spawner, we can do adjustments later, right now we have to make a main menu pawn and game mode, in content browser, go to your players folder and add a new blueprint pawn class, call it main menu pawn, now we need a game mode, in your content browser, add your game mode, set it to your main menu game mode in your world settings, I can drag it into this box. It is important that you set default pawn class to none. We are placing the player in the world, we don't need to spawn a second one in. Open your menu pawn class, add a camera component. Change the field of view to your desired value, I chose 60. In the event graph, you just need the event begin play. I added a get player controller, I added a set show mouse cursor to and set it to true. Now I can just call the create widget node and select the main menu widget. Add to the viewport afterwards. Get your player controller again and you want to set mode to UI only. The widget focus is the main menu widget. The main code is all done for the main menu. You can test the game by adding a camera to the map. Next, I will just be adding optional features and fixing bugs. You can check the timestamps in the description to choose what you want. Let's add the noise texture overlay for the main menu. Add an image. Anchor it to the whole screen. You can set the offsets all to zero. Set the Z order to minus one so the image is behind the UI. Temporarily made it black and made the alpha value lower. However, we want to make a material to animate the noise overlay. In your materials folder, create a new material called M underscore main menu noise or glitch. The material is somewhat complex, only do this part if you understand at least some parts of the Unreal Engine shader graph. With UI materials, you need to set the domain to user interface so it is compatible. We also want to have the material be translucent so we can control the alpha, otherwise we won't be able to see the 3D map and animatronic. First add a texture sample node. Select a noise texture like the one I imported earlier. We want to use the UV input to animate it. Get the Panner node. The coordinates input will just be the texture coordinate. We also need the Time node. To make a jittering effect, from Time get a Cosine node and a Sine node. We can add both together, connect it to speed, while Time goes into the Time node. Connect your texture sample to the final color and the material is done. Apply and save. It is optional but I will add a scan line. First get a texture coordinate, get a breakout two float components. From your red get an append node. From your green, get a add node, connect that to the append node, you can press the arrow to see a little visual below. To animate the scan line, get a panner node. We also need a time node. Add a multiply node. I added a scalar parameter called line speed. I gave a slow speed of 0.1 value. You can right click a node and set preview to show it on the upper screen, it is good. Just remember to stop previewing it afterwards or you might think the material is broken. Connect it to the time. I will preview this node. I added a linear gradient. I added a power node and set it to 50 to control the gradient. I have two power nodes, the second one is a higher value like 100. I have a multiply node. I also add a 1 minus node to the second power node. I multiply the two values. To put the two nodes to work together, I used an add node. Stop previewing and check through the code. I add tiny adjustments. After this multiply, I add a frac which flickers the material. After the multiply node, I add a saturate node to clamp the add from 0 to 1. Here. I adjust the second power value to 100. You can test other values until you get a good scan line. I finally stopped the previewing to see it overlay the noise texture. Apply and save. Go to your user interface and change the image to your material. Now it is important to change the color tint from black back to white. 
Once that is done, I compiled and tested the main menu screen. Now to add audio and camera shakes. I imported the FNAF main menu theme, I will link it below. I right clicked and converted it to a sound cue. Open it and click on the music, tick looping on. Now on your main menu pawn, you can search for play sound 2D, you can select your music cue. Now the camera shakes, in your content browser. In the search bar below, search for a camera shake, click on the matinee camera shake, I do have tutorials on this, type main menu camera shake, you have lots of settings and you can experiment with it, put oscillation duration to a really high value, this is the length of the shake, now I will put some values for the rotation oscillation, for pitch, I added 0.82 and 1, for yaw, I did 0.25 and 0.1, for the roll, I set it to 0.82 and 0.45. I randomized the location values at around but kept it near to 0.5. Compile and save. In your main menu blueprint, add a get player controller, search for a client play camera shake, select your camera shake. You can now test the game to see if it all functions good. This is the final aspect and that is the animatronic swapper itself. Make it a blueprint pong class. Name it and open it up. Add a skeletal mesh. In your event graph, add a variable if you have a data table. It is a data row handle type. Add an event called update mesh. I don't know an efficient way but get data table row names. Select your data table. Get random from the array which picks a random name from the table. Now you can set it to the variable. Make data table row handle and set your data table and connect the names together. Now getting the data from the row, right click and split the structure. Search for get data table row. This part is the same as the setup function for your animatronics. From this out row, break the animatronic data structure. Get your skeletal mesh. Search set skeletal mesh and connect the input to the model in the structure. Get the mesh again and we can set animation instance class. From the materials section, get a for each loop. We want to get the skeletal mesh and set material. The index goes to array index and the material goes to the element. From completed, we can add a slight delay of a random time. For testing, I put small delay values. Call the function again so it loops making the animatronics swap. On event begin play, you also want to call the update mesh function so it starts the loop. In your viewport. Select your mesh and give a temporary mesh like Freddy so you can place it in the main menu. Compile and save and delete this cube. Place your Freddy in the right place. You can click on your camera and pin this tiny view. Also I forgot to do this. Click on your camera and set auto possess player to player 0. This is so the camera gets possessed by the player. I do a bit more level design such as post process. I turn the exposure brightness to just 2 and mess with other settings. Test the game after that and it should swap. I want to use the glitched eyes material for this blueprint so the animatronic at random times has a glitched eye. Simply go to your for each loop and make some space. Get a select node. Connect our first index to the array element as normal. Now the condition for this is that if our array index is equals to our eye material index then it will be true. Our eye index can be found by clicking on the animatronic meshes. I never made these models so it doesn't have the same eye index. Chica has index 1 and it varies for the other animatronics. I can't just put a value into this equals sign. I can use the data table to manage it. Find your animatronic data structure and add a new variable. This will be called eye index and it is an integer. Save it and go to your data table. Open it and you can set the eye index to all these animatronics. In your class, in this structure you have an extra output, you can just drag that to the equals sign. Now we can't just set our eye to the glitched, we want it random. So I add another select. Index 1 has the glitched eye material. Index 0 goes to the array element to have normal eye material. The condition is just a random boolean with weight. That is the animatronic material done, compile and test to see if the eyes swap. I will also play the game a bit before we start bug fixing. We play the game and we can't interact. Open up your player class and on your event begin play, you need to make some space after the widget. 
it has to be after as it is important, get a player controller and set input mode to game and UI. Set the UI focus to the widget. Connect all and test again to see if gameplay works. We need to set our game to go back to main menu if we die or finish the night. Go to your toolbar and select window and click on find in blueprints. Search main menu or open level. Double click them and it takes you to those nodes. Read the code first to see if you are changing the right ones and just change it to main menu. I can delete the pause game and do the same open main menu. Now for jump scares, go to where you do the jump scares. I think the best place to put open level is right after the timeline and after this section here. Now it is all done. Next part is the save system. I hope you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing and sharing. See you next time.